Thank you everyone for joining us today at I Believe Bible Fellowship, where we meet Monday through Friday at uh, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, where we rightly divide the word of truth with our pastor, Dr. Mary Mo Johnson. Um, you can follow us Monday through Friday, as I said, we'll begin it, we'll be beginning a new uh, study. We'll be starting over from Genesis to Revelation on June 1st, so please join us and follow us. You can follow us on Instagram at I Believe Bible Fellowship. Pastor Mar, I would like to take this time and thank you for allowing me to speak on your platform. Thank you for your leadership. We honor you, and we have a lot of respect for you for the things that you're pouring into us, and we thank you for sitting with us Monday through Friday to rightly divide the word of truth. Uh, I'm going to pray before I get started. Um, Father, I thank you for bringing us before your presence this day to hear your word. I pray that you will use me, Father, for your glory. I thank you that those who are here, that you will give them a, a ear to hear what thus saith the Lord. I thank you that you will touch every heart and man, heart and mind of everyone who is listening to what you have to say through me on today. I decrease as you increase, Lord. Use me for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, what I titled, uh, Trust God, He's in Control. Um, this is a part of a series that I did called uh, You Shall Know the Truth and the Truth Shall Set, set You Free. And uh, today I'll be acknowledging God and his sovereignty in our lives. Uh, I believe that if we knew God and his sovereignty and we trusted God and his sovereignty, that uh, we would be able to rest a little more when it came to the things that we see today in society the things that we see all around us, and even when it comes to future things, things to, of tomorrow that we really shouldn't be concerned about unless we're praying about it. But a lot of times we tend to worry on today and tomorrow going to take care of itself. That's what God said in his word. And so you should know the truth and the truth should set you free. Um, you know, with all that's going on in the world today, a lot of people, if they don't know God and they don't know his sovereignty, their hearts will be gripped with fear. And they'll begin to be afraid to, uh, ab based upon what they see with the natural eye. And so uh, when you become fearful, you ultimately become hopeless and then you start to feel helpless and then you start to feel like you're losing control. But with God being sovereign, he's always in control. God is never surprised about what's going on. Uh, God is the uh, the one who was, which means the past. He is, which means right now, and to come, which means the future. So God knows the end from the beginning. He's not surprised by anything that we that may surprise us or blindside us. There are no secrets to God. He knows everything. Nothing is hidden from Him. Nothing, not the thoughts of man, not the intentions of man, and nothing that's going on is hidden from him or surprises him. And sometimes we forget that because we, we view God from our own limited understanding. Uh, we view God kind of like how we view ourselves or we view a parent or we view other people, but his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We cannot figure God out. And in attempting to do so, you will run yourself in a circle or Drive yourself crazy trying to figure him out. And so uh, I'm going to read some scriptures that's going to allow us to see what God's sovereignty is. And God led me this way. This is another one of those messages that I got like at five o'clock this morning. I thought I was going to talk on one thing. And God led me on this thing, which I'm glad he did because me meditating on God's sovereignty this morning has done so much for me that. I don't know. This is like one of these life changing moments for me by meditating on God, who he is. Not. Now I'm starting to see why he's saying, keep your mind stayed on me and I keep you in perfect peace. Why he tell you to seek after him with your whole heart, mind, soul, everything you got. Because when you trust, when you anchor everything in him and when you find out who he is and how much control he has, you can rest. God don't want us around here worrying. He want us worshiping. But how I'm going to worship you, and I don't even know who you are. So it's very crucial and vital that we begin to 
know God, the sovereign God, the God who is in control, the highest God, the only God, the only wise God, the only living God, the only true God. And so I'm going to start with First Chronicles and I'm going to read some uh, uh, many scriptures that tells us who God is on today. Uh, First Chronicles 29, 10 through 13. This is a praise from coming from David to God, uh, showing us who God is. Uh, if anybody can praise God is David. David was the ultimate worshiper of God. And so in Psalms 29, 10 through 13, it says, Therefore God, David blessed the Lord before all the assembly. And David said, Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and we praise your glorious name. If we, this is a type of verse that you have to chew on, meditate on, let it get in you and through you for you to realize and understand how, who God is and how much control he has. I'm going to go over it, come through real quickly and go on to the next scriptures. It said that God has the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. It says that. Uh, it is in heaven that heaven and earth belongs to God. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the whole earth and they that dwell within. That means that God is in full control. It says that riches and honor come from him. So we out here seeking, trying to do everything on our own, trying to control everything, trying to make everything happen. All these things belong to him. But it's some prerequisites that you have to follow in order to get what God have, God is, you can't just walk up to God and just give me, give me my name is Jimmy, throw all these lists on him and then run off in the sunset. That don't work like that with him because it don't work like that with you. It don't work like that with you and your kids. And it definitely don't work like that with you and your, your spouse. Nobody wants anybody to walking up to them, throwing them a whole bunch of demands. And just running off in the sunset. No, get to know me, get to know who I am. Let me know that you're here for me. Because I got all that for you. But what you really here for? Now, through God's grace and mercy, he's so loving. We do that all the time. He still bestows stuff on us. But some of the stuff that was going on in our lives and all around us is because we didn't take time to get to know him. We didn't take time to get to know what he all about, to know all about how he moved with his creation. And so a lot of the stress, anxiety, worry, fear, sickness, disease, and all the things that's uh, coming upon us because we didn't get time, take time to get to know him and what his plan, his will, and his purpose is for our lives. And so uh, some of us need to be happy. Sometimes when we on a time, I call it a time out. We're so busy doing life. We're working. We're taking the kids to soccer practice. We're doing this. We're doing it. We're so busy that we make the little small window for God that we give him all these lists of things we need him to do because he's going to do it our way. We ain't going to do it his way. We guess we want we want, we want him to do it our way because we know everything. We're here today, today, then we cut down like grass tomorrow, and God is eternal. And you can't trace his beginning or his ending, but we want to tell him how the show should go, and we want to we want to control the narrative or the stories of our life, but it don't work that way. And so sometimes in life, you got to get a time out so that you can come and sit in his presence because at the end of the day, God's plan and will going to stand. Man made plans, but it's the Lord's plans that's going to stand. And so a lot of the stuff that we might be off into might ne ne necessarily be God's perfect will for our life, but the amazing thing about God is he still work everything together for our good, even when we kind of go our own way. And so wealth and riches come from God. He reigns over all. We looking at presidents, we looking at kings, looking at that, but God is the, Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. God reigns over all. He said the heart of the king is in his hand. He turned whichever way he will. That's how much control he has. He got the power to control the person's decision-making process. 
not to the point where he, it's like he yields and allows us to choose. He gave humans that right to choose, but God got a way of influencing a person's decision-making process to turn in your favor if need be. And so it also says in your hand is power and might, and in your hand is to make great. It's God that make great. Everybody running around talking about how they made themselves great. I'm not saying everybody. Some people. Some people <laughs> running around talking about I'm great. I made myself great. And I am is God. But it's God that 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 makes people great. It's God that's doing all anything that's good. It comes from God. Um. Now, therefore, I got we thank you and praise you. Job 36, 26. How great is God? He's beyond our understanding. The number of his ears is past finding out. Again, we God's ears are past us finding out. We don't know his beginning and his end, the end of God. It's beyond our understanding. Revelation is 21 and 6. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give up the fountain of water of life freely to all who thirst. The fountain of the water of life is his word. The Holy Spirit. You have to thirst after righteousness. You have to thirst after God. You have to thirst after his word. That's the primary thing. Everything else in life is secondary. So thirsting after God and his righteousness, which is his, I always say his righteousness is his way of doing things. It you Sometimes you can liken God to your household. If your kids do what you ask them to do, you have no problem with giving them things that they want and everything they need. But if they disobedient and they doing their own thing, you might give them what they need, but not necessarily what they want because you give them what they want. You might cause them to harm themselves even more based upon what they out here doing that's contrary to your will for their life. And you actually bring them more into their own demise. And so Colossians 1.16 says, For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were, were created through him and for him. God created all things. He said, well, the principality, domains, thrones, or powers. That means God created good and evil. Some people can't deal with the fact that God created the evil part. But as you can see in the beginning, God was trying to keep us from ever having to know that part with Adam and Eve. Uh, he didn't want us to know the evil part of things. But due to our own this due to their this we all gotta take ownership due to their disobedience that they, they chose to eat of the fruit of the tree that he told them not to eat of and that's how we know evil to this day but that's something that god didn't want us to know because he knew once we knew evil then we would have to witness sin sickness disease death and destruction and all kind of manner of other things that come along with it. and that he didn't want that for us he just wanted us to have a good life and that's still his desire and so uh, Romans 11.33 says, and that's in Romans, Romans 11.33, on the death of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways are past finding out. Jeremiah 32.27 says, behold, this God speaking for himself. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? God letting you know he created every living being. Those that are not even here, he already created them before the foundations of the world. The, the, so he asked you, is there anything too hard for him? He want to know, is that bill too hard for him? Is that legal matter too hard for him? Is anything that you're going through that you might consider a difficulty or a challenge too hard for him. And so uh, in Jeremiah 32, 17, Jeremiah actually answered this question, which is he asked this before God asked it, because God said that in 32, 27. And Jeremiah said in 32, 17, our Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing too hard for God 
and God telling, asking you, is there anything too hard for me? That means that we shouldn't be worrying. We shouldn't be fretting. We shouldn't be concerned. We shouldn't have all this anxiety on us because the God of all creation, the all-knowing God, the omniscient, omnipotent, all-seeing God, who's everywhere at all times, knows the answer to every problem. He knows the answer to every problem. And so we bring stuff to God and then we tell him how we want him to work it out. But we need to be presenting stuff, casting our cares on him and then taking his yoke because it's light. We need to be taking his peace, his love, his joy, his way of doing things, his way of meditating on things and then allow him to direct our paths. We need to be bringing those things to him, acknowledging him in all our ways with certain things, and then he will direct our paths. And so, hold on for one second. Uh, in Matthew 10, 29 through 31, and I'm going to jump to Colossians 1, 16 through uh, 17. For by him, and I'm reading a lot of scriptures, y'all, because I'm, I'm here today. God wants your faith solidified in him. He wants your soul to be so anchored in him that you're not tossed to and fro by everything that come your way and you waving and you don't know and, you, and you're trying to figure out is he going to do it? Is he? he wants you so solidified in him that you rested. I don't know if you ever seen those grandmothers where no matter what you come telling them, they not move because they know God, they experience him. They know like they know, they know the God who was. And so they know that the God don't never change. He the same yesterday today and forevermore, they know the God who was is the God who is, and the God who was, who did what he did when he was, going to do what, what he going to do while he is. And this current thing, thing, and then if something happened in the future, what he did when he was and when he is, he going to do the same thing. Because God, if he delivered you before, he'll do it again. God don't never change. Ain't no changing in him. And so... It's interesting how we go here to deliver us for one thing and then we get to the next thing. And for some reason, we think that he just switched it up on us. No, if anybody do the switching, it's always us. God, that's why he's a rock. He's a for sure thing that you can trust in, that you can rest in, that you can anchor. You can bet everything on him. And you're going to come out on top every time because he don't change. Uh, Colossians 1, 16 through 17 says, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and the earth, and that are earth visible and invisible, whether thrones or domains, I think I read this, principalities of powers, all things were created through him and for him, and, and he is before all things and all things consist. Isaiah 45, 7 through 9, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do these all these things. God said he made peace and he created calamity. He formed the light and he created darkness. Rain down, you heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open up, let them bring forth salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe to him who strives with his maker. Let the pot shirt strive with the pot shirts of the earth. Shall the clay say to him who forms it, what are you making? Or shall your handiwork say he has no hands? God, like, how dare y'all ask where he at? Is he on the throne? It's like we almost got this type of arrogance on us. Well, we think we, I'm telling you, we think we're going to tell God what, what he going to do, when he going to do it, and how he going to do it. And we really need to humble ourselves and reverence him and his sovereignty. If we in this season of our lives will humble ourselves and reverend God in his sovereignty, we wouldn't have a can in the world. Because then we can rest in, the, rest in the fact that God got it all figured out. While we trying to figure it out, he already worked it out. And he got the blueprint on how everything will come before your eyes and how to plan the layout. But you got to come to him first, seeking his way to do it. And not necessarily your ways and into the own limited understanding that you have where you at right now on this current day. Proverbs 16.33 says, the lot is cast into the lap, but it is every decision, but is every decision is from the Lord. Job 42 and 2. I know that you can do everything 
and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. This is Job talking to God. If you don't learn that from nobody else when it comes to trusting in God, we got to learn something from Job. Uh, that that story, I mean, it covered everything. A person can lose sickness. It just covered so many different areas that uh, people can relate to on different levels. Um, that it's a book many people don't go and come through because sometimes it's painful for them to even read the story. But it's really when you need to go in and see the conversations that I had regarding God and his sovereignty in Job. Job told God, I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. Whatever God's plans and purpose is, they're going to come forth. That means that whatever purpose or plan God has for your life, if you will yield to him, his plans is going to come forth one way or another. When he already see the victory. He already know what the end is. He created everything. He created the devil. We give the devil more power and more credit than we give to God on everything. We give evil more credit than good, and God is good. That's why he tell you to meditate on these things, whatever is pure, whatever is love, whatever is good report, because you meditate on those things, you meditate on him. God is consistently trying to get your mind stay on him and not on your circumstances, not on how you feel, not on what you see, and not on what you hear. We can't, we got to be very careful about how we moving around God and how we talking to him because sometimes what we're doing is we actually hurting his feelings. Because, because we haven't taken the time to sit down and get to know him, some of the stuff we come and tell him about is really kind of silly to him. He's like, don't you know me? You talking to me about that? When are you going to start talking to that about me? Y'all heard that when they say, yeah, you keep talking to God about your problem. Not to say that you shouldn't bring your stuff in prayers and petitions and requests, but at some point, you need to be talking to your problems automatically about your God because you know him and you're able to say you know what I know this is a lie because my God is xyz you'll be able to begin to identify the lies because you know who God is and his sovereignty Lamentations 3 37 through 39 that's Lamentations 3 37 39 who is he who speaks and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it it is from the mouth of the most high that woe and well-being proceed. You know that when we speak God's word, we his mouthpiece. God is saying, who is he that speaks and it come to pass? He's saying, you just speaking regular stuff. It ain't according to his word. That ain't really necessarily got to come to pass. But if you speaking as an oracle, what he speaks, it's going to come to pass. Why should a living man complain, a man for the punishment of his sins? God is saying, God really, he, he, he don't like complaining at all. You know, the children of Israel, we all know, got stuck in the wilderness because of murmuring and complaining, murmuring and complaining. He, had, he don't like it at all. He don't like complaining. He don't like confusion or strife. Or, uh, we can go down a whole list of things God don't like. Uh, Acts 4, 27 through 28. For truly against your servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and, Pont and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. I'm going to read this again. God was so in the plan of what Jesus did that Pontius Pilate and them did whatever God needed them to do to, to ensure that Jesus went to that cross with the Calvary for us. Acts 4, 27 to 28 says, For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate. That means that God knew that Herod and Pontius Pilate was going to be used in the process of Jesus going to this cross. We're looking at them like a bunch of enemies, but God knew that they was going to be used for uh, Jesus' glory. This is one of those working together with the devil man for evil for your good that situation uh both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever God's hand and God's purpose determined before to be done God determined that Jesus was going that cross before the foundation of the world 
that was already, God already thought, he already played the roles out. He already know the story. Every Your whole life already planned out. So I want to get to closer to the person that planned everything out and find out what those plans are instead of trying to figure it out on my own. If I'm not going to him, he told us to come to him daily for stuff. He said, tomorrow we're going to take care of itself. So when we worrying, because we're not supposed to be worrying, we're supposed to be worshiping about tomorrow, we in error. We going against the grain. We going against God's wishes. He wants us to come to him. Soon we pop our eyes open, we need to be in his presence. And I'm not saying that to make nobody feel guilty because I'm, I'm not going to act like every time. Well, I do when I wake up. Because I wake up so early at a certain time, I know that's God's time. But that don't mean I'll wake up and start thinking about this and that and that before I open up my mouth and say thank you. I'm not going to act like 100% of my life I've been saying thank you, showing my eyes pop open. I'm not going to say that. But it will be God's will that we will wake up, get in his presence, because he wants you to be full of him for that day so that you can handle the day. So, to, so that you can, and then when you come in at night, he wants you to declutter from the day. He wants you to, again, Come before him again, casting cares and laying everything down before him. You can meet your mice, please, so that he can um, so that he can give you that sweet sleep that you need. A lot of us going to sleep with all the stress, the cares, the worries, anxiety on us. And then we having night terrors or different things going on. And some of us have prosthetic dreams. And then some of us had night terrors based upon what we ate. Different things we did before um, because we didn't get in God's presence before we went to bed. Now, you might not get this right every night, but sometimes you just have to start to set out to do something and continue to do it until it becomes a habit on doing it. And when I'm talking to y'all, I'm talking to myself too. 99.9% of the time because usually God had me telling people stuff that I've already experienced or that I'm currently going through. And so uh, I read to y'all that was, uh, yeah, so God, they did Pontius Pilate and Herod did whatever God had set his hand for them to do and that he purposed before the foundations of the world. Ephesians 1, 4, just as he chose us and him before the foundation of the world, that we will be holy and without blame before him in love. If you want to know what God chose you for before the foundations of the world, it's in Ephesians 1 4. He chose us in Him, in Christ, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. And how are we able to do that? Because of the blood of Jesus. Before, because of the blood of Jesus, because of the power of the Holy Spirit. How are we able to do that? And so, I just want to say that perception is everything. How you perceive a thing determines everything. Uh, perception is how you observe something or how you view it. It's like your mental image of how you view certain things, situations, circumstances, people, places, and things. And it's actually how you discern it based upon your own limited understanding. So my question to you today will be, what lenses are you viewing everything from? And how are you perceiving or discerning what you see transpiring before you on a day-to-day -day basis. How you view God is how you will perceive your circumstances. You have to check your spiritual lenses and see how it is that you view on life circumstances that you are currently going through. Are you viewing it through a lens of doubt, fear, lack? Or are you seeing it through uh, God's lenses? Or have you gotten God's presence long enough to see things the way he sees it? God sees everything clearly with the 2020 vision. He sees it clearly and concisely. And so if you're not careful to view your life circumstances through the lenses of how God sees it, your system, everything going on around you will begin to overwhelm you. It'll begin to overtake you. And like I said, once you become hopeless, you become helpless. Um until you get back in God's presence and let him feel you build you back up on your most holy faith. This whole thing in life is really a faith walk. A faith walk. You are being tested in your faith. Everything is, is 
lean um hinged on faith. And so in life, I always look at life like this. It's when I'm going through something, it's either a test or a trial. And I lump temptations and tribulations over with trials. And then I put a test over here. Either God is testing my faith on something, which normally when I'm going through a trial, tribulation, or temptation, it's still a test, but God don't test you with no temptation. That's that's evil to him. He feel like that's that comes from your flesh. That's your own desires. That's your sinful nature that's being tempted. God don't tempt nobody. Just to be clear on that. Um, that's in the word. But when you're going through a trial or tribulation or a test, all that stuff is working together for your good because it's producing your character, but it's also increasing your faith. Do are we supposed to okay? Well, let me let me just go through everything. No, that don't mean that we have to accept and receive everything that comes our way. That's what prayer is for. That's what getting in God's presence is for, so that He can help you to navigate your way through certain things in life, and He can block certain things in life from happening to you. We all supposed to be on offense and defense and prayer. But I'm saying all that to say. You're going to be rewarded for your faith. And the only way God can determine your faith is by a test. We can say with all our might that we believe him and we trust him. But we he won't know that until it's tried. Until it's tested and tried and shown true. And the only way to know that is to go through certain things. And that don't mean that everything you're going through, like I say, some things are trials and some things are tests. Some things are tribulations. It's a difference. And so what God, we have to begin to see things the way that he see it. We won't know how he sees stuff. We ain't in his presence to find out how he sees things, how he view things from his perspective. We have to get God's perspective on things and not our perspective. Um, we have to work on our perception of God and who he is. We have to continue to remember that God is in control. And that there's nothing too hard for God. No sickness, no doctor report too hard for him. No case. I don't care if they gave him life in prison. That ain't too hard for God. It ain't, man can't determine what God, God's plan. If God told you something different, stand on your faith. And no matter how long it takes, stand on what God told you, not what you see with your natural eye, not what man told you. We got to stop being double-minded and bipolar in the spirit realm when it comes to God. You know, God don't like double man. He wants you to be clear and concise when you're dealing with him. That's where faith come in at. We either always operating in faith or fear. Remember, I said before in the beginning, it's really clear what God is really straightforward. Ain't no in-between. When we start looking at the gray areas, then that's when we get in the air. That's when we get in the double mindedness. Because we think it's a gray area, but it's not. It's very clear. It's black and white. It's faith and fear. Is good versus evil. When you begin to view things like that, you're able to make clear choices and decisions on whose side you're on, and you won't straddle the fence, or you won't be lukewarm in God's mouth, and He got to speed you up. And so, uh, we have to trust God because He already knows the end from the beginning, and we have to stop worrying about stuff and we have to really really worship worship God his in his sovereignty of who he is over any matter we could present requests to him just to show him what's laid before us but then we need to turn around and go on his word and find out who he is over each and every circumstance and begin to confess who our God is over these different matters that have presented itself to us whatever presents itself to us that seems like it's contrary to God's plan and will for our life, we need to present that to him so that he can bring the solution to the problem. And he can order your steps on those uh, particular situations. So, uh, like I say, as humans, we want to tend to control everything. We want to control the process. We want to control the narrative. We want to control the outcome. We want to control our relationship. We want to control our hug. We want to control our wife. We want to control the kids, we want to control the dog, the cat. We so consumed with being full of control that even some of us want to fight over the remote control in the house. We want to control what's playing on TV. You know, just control, 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 control freaks. 
And we have to learn how to let that God is in full control. Let him be in full control. And some for some of us, that sounds scary. That sounds you like, oh, I got to start over. I, I, I don't know what this means when you're saying God is in control. It just means everything that's going on in your life today. Get in his presence. Acknowledge to him that he's in full control over everything. It ain't nothing too hard for him. I don't care what it is. We can look at Job and say that. Ain't nothing too hard for him. Ain't nothing he can't fix. Nothing. Nothing. Not death. Jesus defeated death. I think that's the, I think that, I think it don't get no deeper than death. So what we got going on in our life that we can't present it to God so that he can bring the healing and everything that he, God is a good God. He want to do good to you. Why are we running from the one that want to do right by us and running to everything that want to do us wrong? Everything don't even know how to love us if it ain't been in God's presence to know how to love us. Every person, everything, ain't nothing more valuable than the relationship that we can have with God here on earth. The God of all creation that named all the stars, the galaxies. I mean, he did, he didn't did so much. I mean, we can go on and on about his goodness. He did all this fabulous stuff, and he know down to the hair on your head, the number of hairs on your head. And here we go. We want to hurry and jump up and run out and chase what? What's out there? I don't want to. We shouldn't want to chase it down unless he's going with us which he never leave us forsake us. But what I'm saying is, let's begin to cultivate that love relationship that God is yearning for. God love us so, so, so very much. Let's begin to seek and pursue the love of our souls, our first love, the one who loved us from the very foundations of this world. Let's begin to chase after him with all our heart, mind, and soul to the point where we don't even remember we had an issue or a problem. By the time we get out of his presence, we'd be like, oh, I forgot I even told you about that stuff. I know that's already said. How can you say you trust somebody and you don't know? How I'm going to love you if I'm, it's going to be difficult for me, for me to love you wholeheartedly wherever I find my being if I don't trust you. So no matter how you feel, you got to trust God because he's sovereign and he's in control. No matter what you see, you have to trust God because he's sovereign and in control. No matter what you hear, you have to trust God because he's sovereign and in control. No matter what negative doctrine report they give you, you have to trust God because he's sovereign and he's in control. If they give you divorce papers, you have to trust God because he's sovereign and he's in control. If they commit an adultery, you have to trust God because he's sovereign and in control. If they send you a serve you an eviction notice, you have to trust God because he's sovereign and he's in control. If you're a million dollars in debt, you have to trust God because he's a sovereign and he's in control. If you got wayward kids, they don't listen to nobody. Nothing can get them straight. You have to trust God because he's sovereign. And he in control. You can rest in the fact that God, who knows all, sees all, has a solution to any problem that we can present to him. But we got to trust him. We got to trust the process. We got to trust that he heals when we pray his word back to him. But we got to trust that he promised us that his word will never return to him void. Um, so I'm not I'm not gonna be long with this one. It's some more uh scriptures that I wanted. I'm I'm letting God speak on, you know, the word gonna speak for itself. I'm gonna drop about ten more scriptures on y'all, then I'm gonna let y'all go. I'm I'm gonna tell y'all a little funny story. It's funny to me. It's about trusting the process, and I don't know if it's a lineup, but it seemed like it go with this. I remember I went on a trip when I was young. I think I was eighteen. Yeah, I was eighteen, and I went on this trip when we went school with that, and I. I couldn't swim. And so we went, they went, it's like they went all, they ain't go out to the middle of the ocean because the middle of the ocean is fine, but they went way past and you couldn't see the shoreline. And so they went out to this coral reef and this is my first time going um, snorkeling. 
I think I might have said scuba now, snorkeling. And so everybody getting out of the boat <laughs> to go snorkeling. And I'm like, oh, they bold. They, they're like, they having a good time. They, they floating good. They doing all this stuff. So then they told me to get in the water. And I'm like, uh-uh. I got a life jacket on, but I don't trust the process. I'm like, I am not getting in that water. They crazy. I, I, I'm having fun watching them. Because we in the middle of the ocean. Well, I keep saying the middle of y'all, but it was like, we ain't go that far. It take you a long time to get to the middle of the ocean. But just let me say middle of the ocean. That's the only way I know how to describe it. So that, cause that's what it looked like to me. See, you, your perception is everything. My perception is I can't swim. I have a fear of water. The reason why I had a fear of water then was because when I was young and I went to pool with my mother, I had a cousin who was being mischievous wow. and they was trying to hold me under the water and pull me in to the point where I felt like I was drowning. So I didn't want to experience feeling like I'm drowning again. And so I'm like, even though I got a life vest on, I'm still like, I'm not getting in that water. I don't trust this life. I don't trust the price. I don't trust this life vest. So anyway, I ended up somehow getting on the side of the boat to get this water. All of a sudden, fear, panic, distress, everything came on me. I was holding on to the side of the boat for dear life, screaming to the top of my lungs. I got these goggles on. My eyes big. I'm talking about, help, help, help me, help me. Everybody in the boat laughing. I feel like I'm perishing. Somehow, <laughs> you know, I'm holding my hand. I help. Nobody helping. They rolling on. They actually on the boat, rolling, and laughing, pointing their hand. I'm like, I'm gonna die with people laughing at me. This is crazy. Anyway, I finally let go, fell down into the water, and then when I fell down to the water, I stood up because it was, <laughs> I don't know how, but with a coral reef, it was like a ground. So the water only came like right here. So they laughing at me because they already been in the water. They know that um, you can stand up in this water. And here I am screaming, my eyes are big, about to bust out of my head. Help, help, help. And they laughing because they know the end from the beginning. And sometimes I be thinking God I'll be looking. And when we going crazy and panicking over and all that, sometimes he might be laughing like they is acting silly and they drowning in three inches of water. I mean, they, they flailing and acting like they drowning in three inches of water. You know, um, so I stood up and I, I had to laugh at myself because I'm like, I thought I was going to die. I thought these people were evil and wicked. <laughs> the last thing I'm going to see is people mocking me and laughing at me as I perish in the water because I wasn't trusting that life because I just knew I was going down. And so I get in the water. So now this is like a Peter moment. You know, now you feeling good. You just talking about, come on, keep your eyes on me. I get in this water. I put my hand up, I'm seeing all these beautiful fishes, and all of a sudden I see it looked like hundreds of fishes coming to me. The first thing in my head, I don't know if y'all know that no videos where they be like run, and then that music come on and people start running. <laughs> That's the first thing in my mind. I turned around, and I'm like, I'm gonna run in this water to get away from these fish. The guy said, Stop, don't run. They not gonna do nothing. It was a tour guy we had with us. So I'm I ain't trying to hear nothing he's talking about, but all of a sudden they got up on me. I just stood still like this and I'm looking. And why the fish come up on me, but then they went around me. And then if they came behind me, because I look back, they came back together. So I had to stand there through that process of the fish coming and it was. So what seems to be one of the worst things I thought was going to happen to me, I'm going to get ate up because the first thing I'm coming up thinking, sharks, piranhas, uh, whales, everything tragic can happen to me, all this fear. Before I even get to the ocean, now I'm there, I'm not getting there. What seemed like it was gonna be one of the worst tragic things that's gonna happen. I'm finna drown, the fish finna eat me up. Ended up being one of the best memories I ever had. The coral reef was so beautiful. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. It was to perfection. The water was clear. The crazy part is, if I would have, the water was so clear, if I would just would have went and looked down in the water, I would have seen that you could stand on the ground. But I was I was afraid. And when you're afraid, you can't see clearly. I didn't trust the process. I didn't trust the people that I was with. I didn't trust their opinion. That they, they never told me. See, God don't tell you everything. They never told me that I can stand up. So I, I didn't trust. It. So God don't tell you everything. They just tell you, go ahead and get in. Can, he tell you to do certain things and not lean into your own, own understanding because he already understand that everything going to be okay. So the people that I was with, the reason why they was laughing, because they already understood I was going to be all right. 
And so they just really took the day back and I thought I was dying. And it wasn't nothing happening to me. <laughs> and so I just thought about that this morning when I was God was talking to me about his sovereignty. It, for some reason, he took me back to when I was 18 and how I was panicking and going crazy. He said, you, now go back over your life and think about all the times you panicked and went crazy over some stuff because you didn't think I was going to come through and I came through then. And when I came through, I showed up and showed out to him. I had to go back and say, that's the good thing about walking with God for some time because you can go back and identify different marks in your life where you have seen the hand of God move in your life. And now you learn to develop and cultivate your patience with him because you can see that sometimes he might have did it in two days, two weeks, might have took two years, might have took 20 years. You, we can use Pastor Mo as an example. God said he walked with her ministry, ministry. But look at now. Over, I believe she over 40 years in ministry. And God is here showing up, showing out, doing everything he promised he's going to do and going to do even greater. And this this still almost like the beginning. But she has walked consistently with God. She's faith. She probably get him to do a whole sermon that allows I don't know how long to tell you about her faith and her and God because she has experience with him. And so right now we sitting here today under this teaching because of her faith. She could have chose fear and probably tapped out a long time ago when what God promised her a long time ago seemed like it wasn't coming to pass. But she chose to stick with God and believe God and trust God that what he told her, what she didn't wrote down in her Bible, what she didn't wrote down in her prayer journal, what she didn't pray because he placed in the heart to do so will come to pass. And now she's seen and has seen a lot of things that God has promised her come to pass. I like, I love people that have been walking with God for a long time. They got history with him. And they got, if you can sit with them sometimes and really let them minister to you, they got some stories they can tell you of God's goodness. Always remember to tell your God, your children and kids around you about God's goodness. See, we was coming over in an era where people didn't want to talk about what they did in their past, and they went, so sometimes a generation will get lost because they don't know your God. You're not talking about it. You acting like you the best thing since life's bread, and nobody know nothing that God brought you to because you woke up, and you wonderful when you woke up, and you wonderful when you go down. You don't have no issues, no problems, and God ain't never delivered you from nothing. God ain't set you free from nothing. God ain't redeemed you from nothing, and so everybody... When you, when you pass away, they thought your life was perfect. But because you didn't go back and remind them of how imperfect you were and how God, anything that was good in your life, it came from God. So make sure you mindful. Don't be afraid when your child is able to receive what you're saying about your past because everything everybody can receive what you have to say at a certain age. But let them know the different markers in your life where God has shown you his sovereignty. And sometimes you can't tell them nothing because you don't remember yourself because you didn't write it down. I'm going to put out a clarion call to everybody today. Whenever God do something good in your life, from the least to the greatest, write it down. Write it down. And write it down and set it aside for your kids so they can go back and say, well, if God delivered grandma, your kids and your grandkids, if God delivered grandma so-and-so from this, if he did it for her, then I know he could do it for me. What do they have? We, we got to go way back and see what he did with Moses. And then what about when he delivered you from something? Let them see the consistency and God's sovereignty. Some of us can't even go back two, three, four generations to find out what God did for those people. And these were people that were walking with the Lord because ain't nothing written down. By the time somebody else gets to tell the story, they didn't flip the script. No, write the script out so nobody can't flip it and put it in something that's eternal. Maybe an email. I don't know. Put it in something where it won't get lost. Start remembering with God because we can't remember everything. We try to walk around. That's why half of us walking around and confused because you're trying to remember everything. Get some of this stuff out of you. Get it on paper. All these burdens you're carrying, all these cares and these woes. Get it out. Get it out your system. Present it to God. He said, give me your burdens. We carrying stuff we're not supposed to carry. And that's why we feel weighed down. We feel bogged down. 
you feel confused, you feel distressed because you're carrying something that he's supposed to carry. You're not designed to carry certain things. You're designed to worship him, to worship him in spirit and truth. God wants you free. He came, Jesus didn't come for you to be oppressed, depressed, and all. He set us free. That's like we, people be laughing at the slave. How you know? How you know they were free? They were still standing there with the master. And they know they're free. I don't know how they know it. If it was me, no, it was you. You the same one day, you free. Same scenario, just a spiritual matter. Jesus came and set the captives free. We got to know our rights in this Bible. This is our constitution from our kingdom. That's our constitution. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The truth is God is the sovereign God. We are his children. We are no longer under the law. Jesus fulfilled the law. We need to go before God and find out what our rights is as kingdom citizens. And we need to bring heaven to earth and operate with and rule and reign as kings and priests on this earth and be about our father's business. It's game over. Playtime over. Playtime is over. Playtime is over. God is serious. He's looking for those who want to really, really do this thing the right way. Those who are willing to say, you know what? I live my life the way I, I'm tried it my way. And this is how I know who I am today. I think I'm gonna choose this day who I'm gonna serve. And I'm just gonna serve you and trust you wholeheartedly. I'm gonna serve you with this, this doctor's report sitting right here saying I got five days limbs. But I'm gonna trust that your word says, surely I shall not die to live to declare the worship of your Lord. I'm canceling this, this, this doctor report. This is a lie. This return to sin. No, not the doctors, but whoever gave the evil report. And that usually comes from a wickedness and high place of spiritual wickedness. We don't war against flesh and blood. God loves his creation. He loves his baby. It, you love your kids, even the worst one. The worst one, everybody don't like this kid. They the worst thing in the city. But guess what? Ain't nothing like a mother's love. But a mother's love can't even beat the love of God. Can't nobody beat God loving because he is love. And so we do him a great injustice, a great injustice when we don't trust his love for us. You got to keep in mind how you will be towards your kids. And then you got to know that God a thousand times more like that with you at the least. I can't even put a number on it. The reason why you got kid because God loved you so much that he created you first to have kids. Like he had you all on his mind and he all in your business with kids who you gonna date. He all up in the business. He want to be in the business, but we won't let him. I want him to be you got everybody else in your business but him. That's the one you want in your business. Choose a day to have God all up in your family. Let him come in and help you clean up house, clean up ship, clean up from the inside out and see if your life, if you walk with him, Starting June 1st. Start today and be ready by June 1st. From Genesis to Revelation. Pastor Mo tell you, walk with this word for at least 18 months and see if you don't see a transformation in your life that you can go back and take note. You can go back in your book of remembrance and say, I remember when I started June 1st. From June 1st, even to the next June 1st of 2024, you will see a notable change in different areas of your life. But walk that other six months out and see. And I say, with all this good teaching we get, you might as well just sit here on the rock and just and just be engrafted in because we're getting good, solid biblical teaching right here. Some I'm not saying it's not going on nowhere in the world. I'll be alive. But right now, something like I ain't never seen before. I don't know what nobody else seen, but it's it's good here. We're getting strong be here, and we also got milk for the babes. And so come in and sit up under these teachings. Trust God as the sovereign God. Get to know the sovereign God before you get to know God any other kind of way. Get to know who he is. Study him. Meditate on him. 
Stop asking people. How I find out who the sovereign God is? Go, you Google everything else, foolish. If we threw out a demonic name right now, you'd be the first one to Google in while I'm talking before I get it out of my mouth. But then we start talking about God. We don't nobody know nothing. They start asking a thousand questions. You know the answer. Go look up scriptures on sovereign God and start there. And then once you start there, the Holy Spirit is going to lead you into all truths. And it's going to be the truth that's going to set you free. Start making an effort. How can you dare ask me how I found out about the sovereign God? That, how you think God feels? You don't know yet? And I'm not saying it to be hard on somebody. People perish because of lack of knowledge. A lot of people grew up in a household where their parents didn't know God. So how are they going to get to know a God? So a lot of people, I don't know if I had a cousin. She had, she had let me tell this story. <laughs> she was an atheist. She like, I don't, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. This and the other. And I remember my grandma, my grandma Larry. Um, grandma told her, you don't believe in God. You ain't coming up in here. Can't come to my house. <laughs> she the same guy that told her, I mean, God, she the same person that told my cousin before. Um, oh, because after that, see, because sometimes, you can be a little bit tough, you know. I remember she told she could come to the house the most, and then my cousin, because she was staying at the house, she had moved out. But I think she ended up not having nowhere to go. And my she came in the door, but came ring my grandmother's door, and my grandma said, uh, she said, Grandma, I ain't got nowhere to go. My grandma said, sink or swim. See, that's the kind of people I grew up around that they had like this tough, 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 tough love. So I ended up getting saved. And when I got saved, I had some back problems and I got healed from my cousin. Knew the, my cousin knew a lot. She knew me before I got saved because we like this. And so, and even though my cousin said she didn't believe in God, she didn't really display that because she was the type of person that had a good moral around her. So it ain't like she did a whole bunch of stuff that displayed that she didn't believe in God. She was just leaning to her own understanding. Anyway, some people will cut you off. They think you don't believe in God and stuff like that. You know, that's more like religion. But anyway, to say today, because my uh, back got healed the way it did, and my cousin seen a change in me, and because when I first got saved, I was holiness is right, you know, and really, really walking before the Lord. And they could see the change in me because they knew me. I'm like night and day before they asked. Like, I'm a miracle. I'm a wonder. And by me living a certain lifestyle and really, really, I was talking about, I'm in the Lord, I'm on his bumper. They saw that and my cousin got to telling me about how she don't believe in God. By the time I got to telling her about all God had did for me, all the love he poured into me because I knew him. I still know him, but I'm going to get to know him all over again like I don't know him. Because I knew him and I sat down and called, let him cultivate a relationship with me, I was able to speak on his behalf to her. Whatever I said to her resonated with her. My husband right now is saved, baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. The same person who said she was an atheist and was standing strong on it to the point where she got kicked out of her own grandma house from her living space. And some of us wouldn't even stand for God like that. They, as soon as they come out, we got to go. We'll start compromising with the world. But she stood on what she believed. She believed, I don't believe in God. My grandma, she ain't bad. I'm saying, okay, I stop believing in God and go to church tomorrow. No. She stuck to, I don't believe in God, but that was her strong conviction at that time. But God, just because she said that, God didn't kick her to the curb. He still had a place. And that's how much God loved. He knew that she was in her own understanding. And because she hadn't known him, he hadn't had a personal experience with him yet. That she couldn't believe in a God that she didn't really know. Because she and everything around you says that is a God. So people that say you don't believe in God just saying crazy stuff out there. I used to be saying something. And a lot of them got a, a high level of intelligence, too, because my cousin. Ashley does have a lot of uh, book smarts. But she is saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and you can't tell her nothing about God. Thank you. Usually when somebody that's strong about saying they don't believe in God, be even stronger when they believe in God. You got to get out their way because they're going to run you over talking to you about God. The same one that said they didn't believe. I don't know who I'm saying this for, but somebody needs to hear that because maybe they got somebody in their family that's saying, I don't even think God is this. 
But I'm here to tell you that if you keep walking this walk out with God and you keep representing him and his kingdom, that people around you will begin to line up with the sovereign God based upon how you live your life. We got to live this life and not in just word, but in deed. And please don't think we live in it out of duty and religion. Everything you do, let love be the reason behind what you do. No arterial motives, none of that. Let love rule and reign for everything that you do. The love of God that you get through the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to keep y'all long on this. I know I deviated here and there, but I hope the message is clear, very, very clear. That God is sovereign. Trust him. Uh, love him. Obey him. How can you love somebody you don't trust? You have to get in your word because that's the truth of everything. What we see in before us, the news say fake news, all that. It's a lie. Ain't nothing true but what the word of God said from Genesis to Revelation. The whole book. You got people every day trying to get you to pick a part of the word with identify the lie. Let God be true and every man be a lie. And so, getting your word, 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 word. We got a bonus of Pastor Mo going through the word with us. But it's your duty to get in that word for yourself and cultivate your own relationship with God. So that when you come in and hear Pastor Mo rightly dividing his word of truth, you can be in agreement because you already read it. And then that's going to take you to a whole nother level when you already read it. And now you get new revelation because now she telling you off her life experiences and different things that she went through. And now you think about your life experience. Now you got a whole new revelation of God. That's what I love about this Bible. No matter how many times you read it, no matter how many times you come through it, it's like it's all a new revelation all over again. A new facet of God that you ain't never seen before. So I love you all. I just want to stop by to solidify on trust God, do good, obey him, and love him. If you stay in those areas and focus on that, you'll be all right. And stop saying you don't know what your purpose is. What am I here for? Um, number one, let's just start with you here to worship God and have a relationship with him and fellowship with him. Start with that first. And then pray. He said, everybody ought to pray and to pray without ceasing. So guess what? All y'all prayer warriors, whether you want to be or not. That's your mandate. If you want to find out, start with those things first. And then if you call the relationship with God and you praying and you uh, being in that word, then you'll begin, to, then it'll start to unfold your different gifts and talents and different things and all those things. Some of you already know your gifts before you get saved, but a lot of people don't. And so back in his presence, that's where you find everything at. That's when you begin to transform and find out who you really are. And everything that we are and all we ever be is all wrapped up in Jesus Christ. So with that being said, if anybody's listening to this teacher, teaching, I would like to invite you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior so that you can come to know the full plans, purposes and of God for your life. God has plans for you. Plans to give you a hope and a future and an expected end. Not your expected end, but the expected end that he has for you because he already wrote the play out. He already wrote the movie out. The script already written. And so it will behoove you to line up with his will, his plan, and his purpose because it's always higher and better than any plan you can present to him. And so I thank God that you are here under the sound of my voice. And I pray that you would accept Jesus as your personal savior. 
If you accept him as your savior, God promised that he would send a gift, which is the Holy Spirit. I need you to do everything that God needs you to do. It brings revelation. Holy, the Holy Spirit brings revelation to your eyes. So if I go, if I start talking about the Holy Spirit, we have to go into a whole other teaching. Please go back and watch the teachings of, about the Holy Spirit by Pastor Mary Mo Johnson on YouTube. We have some um, teachings by uh, Don Green, and then we also have a teaching from this Monday on um, by uh, Sumwa uh, on YouTube that you can go back and become abreast on the Holy Spirit. And then you also can get in your word. But I, if I was you, I wouldn't attempt to get in the word. Well, you can, because God sometimes saves somebody by going in and read the word. You just make sure you want to go in there with the, your eyes illuminated by the Holy Spirit. So just say, um, Father, I admit that I am a sinner. Uh, I thank you that Jesus died for my sins. You said if I will confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, that I will be saved. Um, I confess that I am a sinner. I accept Jesus into my heart. Jesus, I thank you for dying for my sins. Come into my life. I thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Use me for your glory. It is in your name that I pray. Jesus, amen. If you have said that prayer, please reach out to IVB, uh, I Believe Bible Fellowship on Instagram. DM them and let them know that you have one over the prayer of salvation. And we will get back in contact with you and we'll go from there. Thank you for joining us today at I Believe Bible Fellowship. Will we go over the word line upon line, precept upon precept under the leadership of Dr. Miriam? Dr. Reverend Mary Mo Johnson. Thank you, Pastor Mo, again, for allowing me to speak on your platform. Uh, I want to pray over, over everybody before we leave, and then we're going to do announcements in Job 5, 12. Father, I thank you that your people have an uh, ear to hear what you have said on today. I thank you for touching the heart, mind, and soul of your people. I thank you that they will begin to acknowledge you as a sovereign God over every situation and circumstance, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We ask you to forgive us for every time we attempted to do it on our own, try to figure it out, but we probably uh, hurt you by even coming to you and with sit situations and things that you know full well that you've already worked out and that you've already taken care of. May we trust you more. May we love you more. May we show up for you more, Lord. I pray that you would place it in our heart, mind, and soul to seek after you with every fiber of our being. You said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land, according to 2 Chronicles 7.14. Lord, we pray that this scripture will birth forth for each and every one of us, that we will humble ourselves before you, that we will seek your face, that we will turn from our wicked ways so that you will heal from heaven and heal our land, Lord. Thank you for healing our land. Thank you for starting with an internal healing in us, Father God, and bringing healing to everything that's outside of us. We surrender everything over to you this day, every care, every worry, every stress, every burden. We turn it over to you and we lay it at your feet, Father. And we bow humbly before you, acknowledging you as the sovereign God, the only wise God, the only true God, the only living God, the one who is altogether loving. Lord, we thank you that you know all, you see all, and you have the answer to all. We thank you, Father God, for being our Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the one who was and is and is to come. We thank you that we can trust you as our rock, that we can trust you with everything concerning us, that you know the plans that you have for us, Lord, they're not plans of evil, but of good, to give us a hope, a future, and a expected end, Lord. So we thank you, Father, that you are ordering our steps, as we continue to yield to you, to yield to the process, and to yield to the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for keeping each and every family member, for protecting us. We thank you for advancing us and using us for your glory in every area of our life. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every under person under the sound of my voice, from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. And I can say, command Satan to loose their body, their mind, their heart, their soul, and their destiny in the name of Jesus. 
because their destiny is in your hand. And as they come in your presence and acknowledge you as a sovereign God, you will begin to unfold with the plan right before they eyes. Thank you, Father, for working everything together for our good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thine, I'm turning it.